anime has some very interesting topics. There's always different things talking of like gods and demons leveling up, like being, you know, leveling up secrets, this, that, and the third. All types of different topics. This topic is definitely one of the most interesting by far. Ohio Best of Friendos. Tonight, we are going to be in for a very long one, but a very exciting one. This one is titled Orphan Reincarnates with Cheat Leveling System from Seven Gods, but hides his abilities. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let's get into it. Was an orphan boy that reincarnated into a different world after accidentally meeting this dude. In this new world, however, the seven gods bestowed upon him the cheat leveling system, granting him stats to become the most overpowered human ever. While walking home one day, Sheena saw people rushing out of a store chaotically, and two girls tripped right next to him. The thief waved his knife around and began sprinting towards the ladies. But instead of abandoning them, Sheena rushed towards him, tackling him down. He screamed at the girls to escape, but before he knew it, he began bleeding out of his stomach, causing the bandit to run away in fear. Oh, wow. In his last moments, he was glad to have saved those two girls. But I'm about to give me some, some, some good grub, his too. His consciousness began fading, but when he opened his eyes, he found himself in a mysterious room. A maid began crying and calling See? him Cain. Confusing. I always wonder about that, like, you know, like, him if he remembers his mother. what if None you were reborn Kane, but when he takes as somebody else or mirror, something else completely, panicking. bro? Like, that would be Wondering interesting. Who he's become. After being in a coma for a week, the maid thinks that his fever is messing with his memory. His mother asks Sylvia to go and prepare him soup, and after they leave the room, Kane still has no idea how he's become a child. Mm. He wonders if he's an anime protagonist in an isekai. This guy's on to us. Without uh, wasting mm, time, bro broke the fourth wall. Investigating his entire room Said to this guy's on to us. Weapons. But it appears he still has an Asian persuasion. Sylvia thinks he wet himself, but poor Kane cries for losing all his manhood. After she left the room, Kane was able to extract all the information he wanted out of her. His name is Kane Gon Von Silver. Yeah, see, I don't know. Name, a uh, this said what a name? <laughs> with a sister called Rianne. However, Garm is a See, I don't know <laughs> how I'd feel She's about birth to his two still having my memories and being, like, starting back up. Actually, I think that might be cool, though. Because you get, like, a whole nother, like, redo in life from, like, a super young age. But I don't know, though. There'd be, like, some downsides to, like, having my memory and, like, being a kid again, bro. some magic as long as he can learn to read. So he begins practicing right away. When Kane learned about magic, he knew he wanted to live the rest of his life here. Because in his last world, his parents had already perished, and his last relative, his why they say perished, bro? Just away, Perish just that makes it sound awful. Miss during dinner, say Gar passed away or something. Wrote, <laughs> and Reen tells him that he can do math already as well. Sarah thinks her son is a genius, but Kane compliments Sylvia for being the best maid in the world. His parents get suspicious about why he became studious out of nowhere, and Sylvia sticks the milk that she extracted from his mother's plot. Garm wishes oh. he was there to witness the extraction. Oh. Kane explains he just wants to learn all about this world so he can become an adventurer. Bro, uh, a freakily, can he? <laughs> so motivated. Said, I wish I could have watched. <laughs> Garm allows him to read all of his magic books, but warns him that he won't be able to use magic until he's baptized at the age of five. His mother thinks he won't be able to use magic until then anyways, but the mischievous plot maker is already cooking up fire with his hand. He realizes that he can already use magic and has achieved every otaku's dream. Oh. But while casting his next spell, his hands burn and he begins losing control. Kane mm. thinks that these Flame magical on. abilities will allow him to become the strongest edge lord. The only thing left to complete his otaku dreams is a sis-con relationship to top this all off. Hey, yo! Oh, wait, there we go. Stop! <laughs> Telling him that she's discovered all about his secrets. They wild. Discovered that he's been studying the outside world in secret, and Kane is glad that his sister is an idiot. From uh, then on, his sister told him all about the outside Kane world. is glad that his sister is an idiot. <laughs> built this kingdom, Yuya. Kane realizes that this guy. I don't think. A different I mean, like, how would anybody catch on to the fact that, like, after learning all you're not you for world, real, though, bro? Like, when you're you, you are you. Like, that's weird. Finally came. He walked inside with his new outfit, and his family was impressed by how handsome he'd become. They head off with horse carriages throughout the entire town, and Kane is surprised to see this medieval-looking world for the first time. 
He's curious about the blessing of the gods, so he asks his sister to see her status window. He's marveled by all of her stats. That, but see, she that would be so stats. cool, though. She Imagine, like, it's like, dang, bro, like, saw. let me check my stats real no quick. And you're able to open, like, your own stat menu on yourself and be able to, like, levels to the all right, I should probably upgrade my strength, given between level one my five, wisdom, given by the gods my charisma. The like, that would be so cool, bro. Head to the church for Cain to receive his protections, and the priest begins the baptism before their eyes. The pillars of the gods begin to shine a blinding light, and Cain is teleported to meet with all seven gods. They welcome him by his real name, Sheena, and Cain wonders what the hell. Sorry, oh. I meant what the heaven is going on. Oh. Zenim, the god of creation, introduces himself, but Cain thinks that Christmas came early this year because this nutcase looks like Santa Claus. Oh, Zenim oh there's another... Can hear everything uh, he's did they say Zeno? ...and moves on to talk about his reincarnation. Cain's death was unexpected, because in reality, even if he didn't stop the criminal, he would have fallen and everyone would have restrained him. He's basically just a useless dweeb who he sec eyed himself because he wanted to simp over two girls. Nah, that would have had me high, bro. The world we live in. That would have had God me apologizes high. For being so I would have been like, so you're telling me if I would have just stayed out of it, bro, nobody would have got hurt? him to keep his life going. Even though he looks stupid, Cain isn't upset one bit. After all, he's been reincarnated into a loving family and can now use magic which is one of his dreams. Reno, the god of magic, bestows upon him the protection of magic since he's been working so hard. Zenim grants him his protection as well oh, Zenim. along with the god of war, making him the strongest jujitsu warrior there is. The god of technology grants him a bigger brain so he can stop simping over women. Oh. And the god of commerce grants him the judgment ability an item box so he can become the richest top G. The, God the richest top G? The greatest I'm crying. The power to develop plot. Zenim tells him that his status window will show him the effect of all of Bro, his imagine his just, you know, dying, coming back, back. The and being seen the overpowered. Shining so much. So Garm asks to see his That'd be awesome, bro. <laughs> However, Kane has a bad feeling about this, so he runs away to the bathroom to check his status. It's worse than he ever expected, because every single one of his protections is level 10, double the highest level in this world. Kane knows that he needs to hide all of this, and sees a secret ability granted to him called Status Conceal, which he uses to hide his strength. That night at lunch, mm. Kane sat Bro with his said, family who wished him a I happy passed Garm asked fake. if they could <laughs> see his status fake. window. Uh. So he goes on to show it in front of everyone. All of his family is left in disbelief as he's received the protection from It's crazy how he cast like magic over three hundred forty. The, the thing to like hide everything and he was still mages in this entire still surprisingly so strong panics, looking to everybody else. Even though he hid like his real true stats, his bed, fake stats also were really stupid high. Knowing that Sylvia won't be around, he tries to do his first summon to get a cute animal. In his mansion's backyard, he activates the summoning circle, but a giant monster appears from the inside. His sister and Thomas uh, scream. I want a dog! And it's just like the <laughs> Minotaur! Last time he but this time, he promises it will be different. So he rushes to tackle the monster, but it punches him away and crushes his stomach. Even with all the pain, Kane promises that he will no longer allow the people he cares about to cry. He wants to protect others, so he uses all of the energy in his body to cast a spell that makes the monster disappear. As he lies on the floor, he sees the fluffy cat ears and wishes he could have touched them just one last time. Uh. He wishes he didn't have to make people cry again, and worries that he's going to get Isekai. After a few minutes, however, Kane wakes up and realizes that he's still alive. Right, he's like, oh no, I'm fine. <laughs> the people he tried to protect aren't crying. In this world, he realizes that his powers can actually help <clears throat> save people. On the day of his birthday's ceremony, his father asks him what he aspires to become in his future. I want to become an astronaut. He wants to travel across the lands and help all sorts of people. So in order to protect everyone's smiles, he will become an adventurer. After hearing the determination in his voice, Garm promised to hire a tutor for him. Inside his bedroom, he wondered what his tutor would be like. But she had finally arrived. Cain was so excited that he ran to the window. Why did an ogre and a witch pop up in bro's head? Falling in the most convenient position possible. Oh, plot development. Yeah, boy. He apologized to the girl, and the butler introduced Kane's two tutors, Millie and Mia, <laughs> Bro meant to do that. Mansion. You know he meant to. His brain, it was in his head. <laughs> has been given the title his body just reacted to what his brain was thinking. Kane is too busy noticing that Nina is an elf. Garm says they don't need to be so formal, and Kane asks them to talk with him as if he was their friend. Millie is excited to finally teach him. Flo Millie. In lessons right away. 
Inside the mansion's training area, Kane demonstrates his swordsmanship prowess, which shocks Millie. To evaluate Kane's abilities, she asks him for a mock duel. Imagine Kane rushes getting dropped towards her and she barely by a... Is he even five yet? Nina wonders if he's received the war god's blessing. And Kane says Imagine getting dropped by, like, a five-year-old. <laughs> You've been training him some magic most of your life, bro, and you over here getting, uh, Nina dropped by a five-year-old. Level three magic protection. But Kane has already learned all the basics. He demonstrates his ability to summon magic from all the elements, and his spells are so powerful that they pierce through stone targets. Kane reveals that he's received the protection from the magic god as well, and Millie worries that they can't teach him anything mm. after all. He pulls out a towel from his item box, and the girls realize that they're basically useless. If they were to try to teach him anything over here, he would end up destroying the entire manor. So Kane suggests they go outside the mansion to study. He's never left the premises, so Millie and Nina think it would be better for him to go outside anyway. They explain to Garm that Kane's abilities will destroy the mansion, and Garm panics when he finds out his son is this strong mm -hmm. on the first day. He knew this day would come eventually, but hoped Kane would mature more first. Reluctantly, Garm agrees to let him go outside on the condition that he never enters the forest. Kane promises <laughs> that he will. First thing that I decided to do, I'm going to the forest. <laughs> Nina begins with his magic training and asks him to demonstrate his intermediate level magic. Immediately, Kane readies a fire spell and casts it towards the stone. Knocking both of the girls and leaving a giant crater where the stone That's more than intermediate. They wonder if consuming all that mana has tired him out, but Kane hasn't broken a single sweat. As he laughed off his accomplishment, Millie realized there were enemies nearby, and a rabbit jumped out from the bushes to attack Millie. <laughs> oh no, rabbits! <laughs> rushed towards Kane. They're like nine the they're like fox rabbits bullets to defeat it. Millie wondered if he was going to sell the drops, but Kane wanted to show it to his family. So he stored it in his item box. Millie is amazed since she's been saving up for years to get a magic bag, a less powerful version of his item box. In the meantime, Nina uses her search ability to scan within 300 meters for monsters. Kane thinks what she did was cool, so he tries to copy mm. the same spell, Imagine, bro. casting it to locate the exact. It's like, oh yeah, it took me rabbits. years and Surprise years. It's gonna take you years of experience to do this. Can I try? I mean, you can. Runs towards does it? Oh wait, it's even better than my. It's even better than yours, actually. The rabbits together. <laughs> However, one of them runs away and Kane tries to pursue it, but Millie warns him to never go inside the forest since it has legendary monsters living inside. <laughs> Every legendary, you say? All the monsters try to break into the They must not have met me yet. <laughs> Kane realizes how dangerous it is, but wishes to one day explore it on his own. That night, he realized that he'd already reached level 8 after beating just a few rabbits. He investigated the reason for his massive level up and saw that the god-chosen title granted him 100 times more XP. But not only that, each level up granted Bro, just a walk him 100 cheat times code. the ability points. Kane's power has already surpassed most humans, and he's realized that the entire <coughs> nation is going to try and get rid of him if this continues. A few months later, Millie takes Kane to the Adventurer's Guild so he can fight some stronger monsters. Inside, Roxen. Sorry, wrong show. Inside, Chill. Rudy. F wrong show. <laughs> Rudy asks what brings them here today. And Millie wants to acquire some. She literally looks like perfect for a thousand other but generic Man characters. Comes mocks Millie and Nina for being D rankers and babysitting a child. Since she's a D rank, he tells her to ditch the kid so he can show her what a real D looks like. Nina tells him to. Hey yo! Off, but Cross is fed up with her disrespect and picks her up while two others restrain Millie. As he's about to grab her face, Kane holds his arm and says that he will not allow him to treat his tutors like that. Millie begs Kane to run, but Kane tells him that he needs to start training and smacks him in the face. Oh. Cross recovers and tries punching him, but Kane evades and destroys his footwork, saying that his name is Kane. But Cross continues trying to fight against him. He grabs bro, I would have stopped after I got pimp slapped by a child, bro, and fell. One of the attacks, going as far as to even hold his sword with his fingers and throwing him out. The other two hold a knife to Millie, but Kane makes quick work of them and kicks them out. Ain't no way you he got pimp slapped by a five-year-old, bro. Protect him next time. He had so much force to knock you on the ground, bro. And then you think, like, you go get back up and try to do something after that. Like, I would have just left at that point, bro. I would have just had to, like, like, I lost my balance or something and been like, nah, you know, it's cool. Millie wanted a magic bag, so that night, Kane snuck into the deepest parts of the dark forest. A blood ogre appeared before him. Next, he defeated an earth dragon. And the guards thought that a monster rampage was about to commence this decade. The entire army was deployed and Garm led the troops to defeat them. 
Kane's collected everything he's came to get and teleports away, leaving behind his towel. Garmer that was busted. Scene, and his subordinate informs him that all the monsters have been eliminated in the forest, wondering who could be so overpowered. Garm looks at the ground <laughs> Your son. his towel, shocking every bone in his body. The final day of Kane's tutoring arrives, leaving Millie and Nina with a bittersweet feeling for having been with him all this time. They come and let him know that today will be his graduation and congratulate him on working hard for the last three years. Kane thanks them for all the time they've been with him, so he hopes that the magical bags he's created for them will show them how great Those are nice. He's Fancy magic bags, too. He's collecting blood ogre and earth dragon inside the forest, but he tells them not to worry, because they're just regular bags bro, that won't hold... Bro, imagine the monsters, bro. I'd be tells pissed. Him <laughs> expensive magic bag can only carry it's like, oh, look, a child. So this magic <laughs> Later through the fight, oh, no, a child. <laughs> try to rob them of it but Kane reveals that he's enchanted them so that if anyone else carries these bags they'll be as heavy as everything held inside of them that's even beyond national treasure class sensational sensational <laughs> thank him for doing all this and they both get on their knees for him hey yo <laughs> That's not there! <laughs> That's not there! They tell him that if he ever needs their help when he grows up, he can always come to them and they can help him with anything he needs help with. At that moment, their contract was over and Cain felt like he grew a little more, and so did I. Months later inside... Hey, yo, what? Battled against a red <laughs> Bro saying some out-of-pocket crazy him. stuff. He's defeated one of the strongest mobs in existence. So when he examined his level, he realized his magic was over 80 million and he's earned the title Dragon Slayer. Two years have passed since that day, and Kane is finally 10 years old and will be attending a noble event to Bro, really? his birthday. It will take really achieve some of the greatest feats all uh, before he was 10. Their travels. So Kane casts his search ability to scan a 3 kilometer radius. He discovers monsters have ambushed soldiers ahead and tells his dad to hurry so they can try to save the people. However, the horses are too slow, so Kane jumps out of the carriage like Spider-Man and activates his... Spider-Man! Spider-Man! ...towards the source of the monsters. The soldiers are cornered and are about to all be defeated. But Kane jumps in and saves one of the soldiers. He continues flying around, using his air cutter ability to... That looks every so fun, bro. Imagine being just still, flying around his... Charge sing, the carriage. Sing. So Kane summons his sword and destroys them with a single swing until he faces the boss. Immediately, he dodges the beast and jumps into the sky, enchanting his sword with fire before ending the monster in his way. The soldier warns him to stay away from the carriage, so Kane tries to introduce himself as the son of Garm. Just then, Garm's soldiers arrive. And I thought he said the son of God. I was like, the okay. Using all of the blood, so Kane holds him tight and activates his healing ability, <laughs> helping every single soldier recover instantly. Garm finally arrives and sees the terrible scene that unfolded before him but instantly recognizes the crest on the carriage as the royal families from inside two i wonder how strong is that like does his dad have any Silver powers the Duke's daughter. they thank garm for saving both of them but garm lets them know that it was his son kane who saved them telestia nearly faints so kane goes on to use a relaxing spell to make her feel better the lights <laughs> he said pain and anxiety away oh uh, kush magic <laughs> magic immediately telestia runs over and thanks him for saving them Silk holds his hand and thinks he's the greatest swordsman she's ever seen. But Telestia says that he's going to be hers, oh. and they begin fighting over him. They drag him to their carriage and take him away. And be like, Father! <laughs> Father, hell! <laughs> Cain wonders why they're sitting so close to him, but Telestia is too scared for him to leave her. She tells him to call her Tellies, and Silk asks him to call her Silk. His spell was too strong and they continue trying to charm him until he succumbs. The soldier informs them that they're finally approaching the rest area. And <laughs> soldier like, hey, don't be getting comfy in there. The <laughs> don't be getting the too comfy in there, look. <laughs> At the rest area, Kane tries to escape this situation, but Telestia and Silk tell him that they want to spend the night with him or they'll be scared. Garm tries to say that it's inappropriate, but the girls claim they're too traumatized. The girls say, I don't give a... <laughs> attack them. Garm says that he can take care of it, but Silk tells him that he's worthless compared to Kane. You're a victim! Mm. <laughs> he stay the night with them, and he accepts if they would separate the beds as far as possible. 
Dharm says he may have two wives, but he should be careful because he has to deal with twice the headaches. That's not ridiculous. That's not ridiculous <laughs> to say that. Inside the bedroom, the girls beg him to sleep next to them, and they push the beds close to each nah, other. Nah, but pushing because the beds next why? To each other why? Are... Enough, so <laughs> because why, to bro? A body pillow all night. The poor Giga Chad has created his own harem at the age of ten, but he's already learned that he would rather be single for the rest of his life. <laughs> He didn't get any sleep that entire night, but after a few more sleepless nights, he finally arrived at the capital. The head knight greets them and they continue clinging on to Kane. The knight bows to honor Kane's presence, having already heard the news of how Kane heroically saved him. Right, bro is already the ones who were fallen. way the higher than any level knight, bro. Their to their Got families. people bowing to the him at this point. Kane tries to dip, but the knight informs him that he <laughs> said Kane tries to dip inside the heart of the castle. Every major politician has gathered for Kane's audience with the king. He takes a bow, and the king's count commends him for being able to save Telestia and Silk from all 50 orcs single-handedly. To reward him for his bravery, like, who the is this kid? A mansion, 10 platinum coins, and the honorary title of baron. Some of the politicians think this is controversial, and some fatso waltz and <laughs> says it's uh. not fair to be giving a child such wealth. The king tells Cornigo to learn how to stop opening his mouth before he stays fat his whole life. Oh, he said, he said shut up, nigga. <laughs> the king says he would have never been able to save the girls in his position. This kingdom needs more knights like Kane, so the king's decision will not change, sending Cornigo running away. The king asks if Kane will accept. With no room for objection, Kane humbly accepts all the awards. But the king isn't done with him and wants to talk with him in private. Right. <laughs> now to talk about my daughter. <laughs> congratulates him on getting his own mansion before his other boys. The king enters along with the two girls. And Kane realizes that he can't tell the king about his daughter calling him daddy last night. Huh? <laughs> saving his daughter. And the duke also expresses his gratitude for saving his daughter, Silk. The king tells him that there's something important that he's come to discuss, and asks him if he would take his daughter's and the duke's daughter's hands. He wouldn't be married yet, but they will wait until he's an adult. After all, he linked arms with them and slept with two unmarried ladies. No one will ever take them as brides now. Hey, yo, he chill. Chill on that. The They're ten. <laughs> Earlier on, this genius idea was Police! by the count to investigate the true identity of Cain. But the king was shocked to find out that both of their daughters wanted to marry Cain. Hearing of his great accomplishments, he was determined to keep Cain in this kingdom. And Cain thinks that this is the worst possible situation he's found himself in. Cain's father Bro's offers no advice. beard and, and hair is magnificent, bro. Collapse onto him. With no other option but to give in, Cain accepts to become their husband. Telestia and Silk think they will never forget the nights they spent together, and mm. Kane explains it was just a misunderstanding because of all the different positions they had to do. They ask him what <laughs> he's saying, and Kane tries to say that he meant the position of the beds. Yo, the guy can't get a break. Yo. A few days later, Kane visited the royal church to meet with the gods. Zenim wondered what took him so long. But Kane explains that his stats had become too overwhelming. That's what I'd be With like. Current stats, I'd be like, hey, yo, y'all done gave me alive. way so too much. Like, at first it was cool, but now but now we have issues. Like that, there are still limits to what Kane can achieve alone. So Zenim advises him to make strong relationships. He goes on to ask Kane if he would create some entertainment based on his knowledge from his previous life. Kane thinks he can create the perfect game, and Zenim and the god of technology beg him to create something like that. Later that day, Rini was shopping for some clothes, and Kane has had enough of her Who's that? on obsession. Oh, that's his sister. Out and noticed Parma outside, the girl he saved five Parmesan! Cheese! Tamanis, <laughs> introduces himself to Kane and is shocked to find out that he's as a noble. Kane asks him to just treat him like every other kid and asks him to browse his shop. It's an antique store where every <laughs> item is crafted What you buying? Tamanis. So <laughs> Kane asks him what are you selling? a special order for him. Tamanis is interested, so Kane shows him the blueprints of the game he's trying to create. Tic Tac Toe! such an interesting <laughs> concept. Tamanis thinks this would be a great hit, so Kane asks him to create a prototype and pays him a full gold coin for it. Tamanis could not accept a such full a full gold game, coin. He tells him that he should treat it like an investment into their relationship. Tamanis humbly accepts and promises that he will create the best game board for him. Kane is glad and leaves the store, but finds out that Rianne is ready to destroy him for disappearing on uh. her. She asks him why he didn't see all the clothes she tried on for him. But Kane says she would look like shit in all of them anyway. Emotional, damn it! <laughs> is glad to hear that her brother thinks she's ugly, because she's going to teach him the hard way what he's supposed to say to her. 
This bitch is scary. She spends all night trying on different outfits to try and impress her Oni-chan and will now punish him by having him try them on. However, Sylvia comes in to save the day and informs him that tomorrow is this the duck. prototype. <laughs> Mad funny, he bro. He's amazed that it looks exactly like the reverse he imagined. They spend the afternoon playing the game together, and Tamanis thinks this will be. I need a little cap. I kind of want to play the game myself. That looked kind of cool. Bestseller. Kane suggests they create a fancy for the nobles, since he's sure the wealthier people will want a fancier product. To begin with, Kane suggests making 50 of the noble version and 1,000 of the normal version. Tamanis thinks he's a genius, but his company can't afford to create such a large inventory. I'll be like, then I'll just give, I'll slide a couple more gold coins away. Tamanis promises he will create all of the boards as quick as possible to make sure their product isn't stolen. They create an off-brand patent by presenting the board to the commerce god and vow their commitment to the contract. The board begins to glow a golden hue in front of them, fulfilling their contract with the gods. Bro said copyright? <laughs> Request, so let's get it copyrighted by the gods real quick. The royal family. Tamanis is honored that his company would ever be considered for such a project. And Parma thinks he's amazing for having connections with the king. Kane thinks she doesn't even know half of the story. Oh. Because the gods are probably enjoying the game he just created for them. The next day is the debut ceremony. So Garm warns Kane. The gods out there talking about some. Yeah! <laughs> Reverse! And will create the largest harem. And Garm <laughs> is shocked that his son is so ruthless. Oh. Inside the castle, Kane sees Cornigo with his children and thinks he looks nasty. The Duke and Silk meet each other, but his smile scares Kane. The Duke thanks him for saving his daughter and hopes they will have a favorable relationship. And Kane realizes that he's screwed, but mm. he won't back down. In front of her own father, Kane tells Silk that she's the most beautiful girl in all of the lands and promises that he okay, will be like her father. The Rizzolanti. Because he was so useless and ugly. <laughs> Emotional <laughs> damage. <laughs> Her father went on to say, You're ugly, you're disgusting, I'm gonna kill you, give me two hundred dollars. Garm won't allow someone to roast his own son, so he tells the Duke that he's Silk's real father. It's an evil world we live in. They walk off and Garm tells Kane that he definitely destroyed every bit of his confidence. And Kane says he's glad he was born to such a giga chat. These fuckers are straight up savages. The royal guards blow the trumpets and the king makes his entrance. Kane doesn't care about anything he's saying because he's too smitten with the princess's beauty. Look After at her speech, straight up ignoring ev like her eyes are like God laser beamed on bro. Has him choking harder than she. He decides to not say that part. But then Kane promises Tellys that he will never leave her unlike the queen who's constantly sleeping with the royal guards. Who hurt this dude. Oh the king no. Kane tells Garm that he's a worthless dad for raising such a mistake of a child. But Kane goes on to say, I'm about to end this man's whole career. It's not Garm's fault. What did he say? I'm gonna have to rewind that one back, bro. For all his banter and gives the king with a gift as an apology. It is the reversey game he's developed with the company, and the king wants to hear all about it after finding out what his daughter has been actually saying. He commands him to come to his room later or he'll be executed, and Kane reluctantly agrees. Mm. Garm asks Kane when he became such a business magnate, and Kane says he needed to do this in order to take care of his mansion since he's richer than his own broke dad. Oh. Garm accepts the insult broke. since all he's ever desired was for his children to become more successful than him. But wants Kane to make sure he can make friends with children his age. Kane is glad to have such a caring dad. The dad dripped out though. I, I can't even cap too. Silk comes and tries to steal him away. They I just realized Silk also Silk looked like the mom, sure which is which is interesting. But Cornigo's children come to interrupt their party. <laughs> the guy says that she's wearing a beautiful dress, but Silk does her best to not say a word to him. One of his lackeys tells Kane that he should get out when Habit is having a private conversation. Kane tries to introduce himself, but Habit tells Kane that he should apologize for bothering Mrs. Silk, upsetting her. Oh. Kane tells her that he'll make Habit apologize first, and he tells her that he's being rude right now. Habit is infuriated and tells Kane to meet him in the parking lot, but they don't it's have a cash me outside so in the field. Silk is worried that Kane is going to be destroyed, so she does everything she can to hug him. But Habit is tired of not getting any attention, so he tells them to begin the battle already. Silk doesn't give two shits what he's saying and hugs Kane tighter so he can protect her. Cornigo's lackeys get angry and they do some rain dance to make the light. You said they do noise. some rain dance? <laughs> A 
next lackey thinks he can do the rain dance better, so he begins summoning his spell. <laughs> Silk tells them to stop all this crap already because Kane isn't just any ordinary child. He's a baron. Silk says that he's the third son of Margrave Garn. I'm the Baron. Kane von Silver. Saved the princess from an army of thirty orcs. Kane von Silver. His name is Kane. My name is Jeff. Cornigo and his lackeys bow to Kane, begging for his forgiveness, and run away like cockroaches. <laughs> After they leave, Silks realized he could have revealed his status this whole time, but just wanted to make them look dumb, so she'll tell the princess about it. Kane begs her not to, but Silk promises that she'll keep it a secret if they go on a date together. Tellies comes in and asks what they're keeping a secret. So right, bro. Silk from like, bro is Tellies tells him that she's going always to getting caught up in something, bro. Silk. But Silk reveals that they're going on a date together. Tellies is jealous that she's been left out and wants to like, Silk, shut your mouth. <laughs> by going on a date with her as well. He thinks she looks cute, so he promises to go on a date with her. The king comes from behind Dang, my and knee, asks bro. what he just said. Tellies he said, what you, say. what'd you say about my daughter? He <laughs> realizes that he's raised a monster. And the king says that they're going to have a long man-to-man -man talk. And Kane realizes that he's finally going to be executed for all the jokes he's been saying. <laughs> Indeed, the king executed him, and this is the end of the story. This is so tragic. Please spam Rip Kane in the comments section because <laughs> <Silk and> Tellies <laughs> will now be widows. The next day, Kane reincarnates back because he's that overpowered. And when the king found out, he was about to execute him again. But the count did everything in his power to save Kane. The Duke comes in and congratulates him on his revival, but wants to play the creator in a game of reversi along with the rest of the palace, and Kane wishes he would have never been revived. Uh. After a week of hiding from the king, Kane is finally ready to see his mansion. He sees it's a rundown mansion that hasn't been maintained in years. With his magic, he investigates all of the rooms and decides to begin cleaning. Imagine, bro, if it was that palace, simple. Bro, just, let me just magic this place clean real quick. quick. Every one of the oh. rooms returns <laughs> to brand new, and Sylvia has finally made it here. She was extremely happy to hear that she's going to be his personal maid, so she's brought along an entire harem of maids and a butler to help him take care of all the nobility matters. Sylvia tries telling the maids <laughs> Squad to of maids and a butler. right away, <laughs> but they tell her that there's not a speck of dust anywhere. Kane reveals that he cleaned everything up with magic, and Colin is surprised how nobody was shocked with his abilities. <laughs> They're like, oh no, he, he's been like this since a child. <laughs> items, since a smaller child, I should say. Home. Like, he is Kane a child still, since he was like a smaller child. Be coming <laughs> home today, back at Garm's mansion. <laughs> you should have heard what he did when he was five. <laughs> before any of them, and they're glad that he's their younger brother. Kane shows his family around his new mansion, but Garm is confused because he remembers it being completely run down and destroyed. SB, he asks Kane if he's the one responsible. He'd be like, Kane says Dad, yes, my magic, magic <laughs> that I've he had since I was a child. <laughs> such a strong son, unlike Garm's other wife. He goes on to take them for a tour of the house, but Garm wishes that Kane had decorated more. Nobles in this generation show their class with paintings, vases, and even mounted monsters. Kane thinks he has the perfect solution, so he disappears for a second to put one up. Just as he comes back, Sylvia begins screaming in fear, and all the maids are scared of the red dragon. And <laughs> oh, that's my dragon! Kane what the <laughs> I took that out some years ago. <laughs> tries to say that this is a red dragon. Garm says no shit, Sherlock, but <laughs> wants to know why he has such a thing here in the first place. So Kane says that he defeated it alone. It's a calamity level beast that's never been defeated before. But Garm is glad to have such a strong son. A mounted red dragon yeah, I beat it like two, three years ago. I'm just kind of carrying it. <laughs> it's actually worth a hundred million dollars in his old world. Just then, Sarah screams in fear and they run together towards the bathroom. Sarah asks him what the toilet is because it's made <laughs> What's the toilet doing? <laughs> Thinking she's just exaggerating, Garm tries to investigate for himself. After he goes inside, Garm realizes that he's been missing out his entire life <laughs> and thinks it will impress the visitors. But Kane wonders why he Imagine, bro, business. everybody being but impressed with your, your specialized toilet. The debut party and invite all the this toilet is magnificent! But doesn't want to deal with all of that again, and wishes he was just a brokey. Colin tells him he's prepared a list of people to invite to make things easier for him. As he looked through the list, Kane noticed Cornigo has been invited, <laughs> but wishes he never had to... Be on right with Cornigo. The only one that wasn't on the list was the king because only counts or higher-ranked nobles can invite royalty. Kane realizes all the preparation and gifts he has to prepare, but has no idea what he could gift any of them. 
Sylvia suggests for Kane to create his own type of gifts along with his unique form of hospitality, and this inspires him. Using his magical abilities, he makes a cup made of glass since porcelain is the only material used for tableware. As for the food, Kane plans on serving everyone hamburgers, and Sylvia thinks it's the best food she's ever tasted. Mm. As for the drink, be like, y'all ain't never had hamburgers before. And loves every bit of it but says that she doesn't know how she feels about it. She wants to get another glass. She continues drinking all the bottles, but Colin comes Ain't no way. The king has requested she said, bottles up. He's infuriated with Kane. <laughs> bottoms up, bottoms up. He hasn't received an invitation to his debut party yet. He slams the desk and says that he's the one who's given him the mansion. But the duke waves his invitation in his face and says king said, that I gave you this. The king is this is mine. Says that he's disappointed <laughs> and you ain't invite me? His future father in law. Me? He tries to tell him the truth, saying that he's never been given the opportunity to hand him an invitation since he's so busy. So he's hand delivered it for him today. The king takes it and shows off to his friends like he a said, school. There we go. There's my invite. King, the king of fool, what? The night of the debut party arrives, and Kane invites everyone inside. The Duke arrives along with Silk, and Kane calls her the most beautiful. Oh, here we go again. I'd be like, Look, listen, I'm tired of you, bro. You gonna chill out? Until she lives here with him. For his address, and Kane thanks everyone for attending and hopes that his meager offering will please all of them. He raises the drink for a toast, and his parents try it out, loving the fizzy taste of it. Even the glasses he gave him that McDonald's them, Sprite. Like treasure chests, <laughs> and Kane lets them know that he personally prepared them as gifts for everyone to take home. The king arrives and sees the beautiful drink waiting for him. After a single sip, he experiences the heavenly feeling of the soda fizzing in his mouth. Oh, it is Sprite. He takes Bro really gave him McDonald's Sprite. <laughs> it squeezes the nice creamy white liquid. This is uh -huh. the first time he's experienced such a delicate combination of cheese and meat, and it feels like a harmony in his mouth. Tellies is enjoying Kane's meat. <laughs> Kane tells the king that she just experienced a different kind of climax and begs Kane to install the same sprayer in the royal bathroom. What the heck, bro? About. The king tries it out and climaxes so loud that everyone hears him. He exits the room like nothing happened. No, bro. Holding this sprayer from him because he needs it installed Brissett, in the bathroom. I need this toilet in King my house. Promises he will. And the king says that his hospitality shows in everything, including the food and his house, chanting that this is the ultimate hospitality. The entire crowd claps to congratulate <laughs> King for joy for his efforts having been recognized. However, Colin informs him that trouble is on the way. Cornigo comes and calls Kane's mansion a doghouse as he walks in. So Kane doesn't let Colin inform him about the dragon statue. He screams in terror, and Kane apologizes that his expensive red <laughs> dragon oh, caught him. Are you scared? <laughs> he tries to walk it off and calls his taste poor. But everyone thinks Cornigo's attitude is vile for a person who arrived after the king. At the table, Sylvia offers him some of the carbonated wine. And he says it looks disgusting, but loves every sip of it. You, I'd be like, you look disgusting. Hamburger, and he calls it disgusting, but continues eating every last bit of it. All of the nobles... Be like, if it's nasty, then, then give me my food back. back. And Colin <laughs> warns him to try and stay composed, which gives him a brilliant idea. He brings Cornigo glasses and explains that they're just a meager offering. Cornigo says they're meager all right, but wants every single one of them along with the recipe for the hamburger. Kane rejects because no. he's going to gift them to everyone here. But Cornigo is frustrated and screams at Kane to give him a hundred glasses immediately. Kane apologizes and tries to stall as another red object approaches. He says he's willing to offer the kingdom's biggest object, even more amazing than a jewel, making Cornigo excited to take it right away. He tells him to please accept mm, to the what? kingdom's mm. biggest, and the king appears from behind him. This catches him by surprise, and Cornigo wonders why he's at such a lowly person's home. The king furiously responds that Kane saved his daughter, and the duke wonders if he came after the king. <laughs> Regardless of Cornigo's lies, the king threatens to take his ranking away if continues mistreating Kane. Trying to weasel I would have took out, it right then and there, bro. I would have took his ranking right then and there, bro. I would have been like, like nah, since you want to, you been acting, you been so at, you know, acting stank for a while, bro. The duke asks if he used them. Oh. Congratulations. You played yourself? <laughs> a week later, Kane was walking when he was approached by Captain Dime. He was sent by the Prime Minister to leave some monster materials. So Dime leads him to the storage room. However, Kane thinks that this room is way too small. 
Dime is caught off guard and wonders if they're all the size of the red dragon in his mansion. He's like, but Kane says uh... it's nothing like that. Just the legendary earth dragon that a whole party of the strongest adventurers couldn't take down. Dime is shocked, but tells Kane to leave the monsters in the middle of the field. So Kane releases <laughs> all of them. I'ma just drop the box. all these he legendaries out here. Of rare <laughs> monsters. Dime asks Kane if he's a hero or a disciple of the gods, causing <laughs> Kane to panic for a second. <laughs> He says goodbye and tries to leave, but Dime asks him if he would like to train with the other knights and meet their leader. Kane realizes he's in deep once more. This was how the entire army was facing off against him, but let's see how this started. Dime had introduced Kane to the rest of the soldiers and informed them that they will be dueling him. But one of the soldiers wonders if they should really should be battling Should we really be fighting a child? <laughs> Since he was so worried, Dime suggested yes. <laughs> for him to fight Kane first. The soldier allows Kane to have the first move. And Kane happily agrees. In an instant, he activates his boost ability and vanishes before the man's eyes, defeating him with a single slash. Kane thanks him and begins trying to leave. But Dime's <laughs> He's like, bro, I'm just trying to leave. Leave me alone. That was how we ended up in this situation. But just as Kane was about to be destroyed, Broke it and he screamed at all of them to hold their position. She asked them why the entire army is about to fight a little child, and hugged him to try and comfort him. Kane is too bewildered by her being an elf, and she asks Dime why he's put the child in this situation. Dime tries to explain. <laughs> why are you all jumping a child? <laughs> why are all these grown men jumping a child? Works <laughs> alone. She finally understands, and she begs Kane to duel against her with a menacing aura. All oh. The soldiers think that Kane lived a nice ten years. <laughs> Don't worry about jumping. <laughs> I'm good enough. Kane asks her why she's holding an actual sword, but she tells him it makes things more interesting and begins rushing towards him. Kane attempts to fight her off, but her agility allows her. Bro, to really fight fought her. her. She, she was going at him full force with a real sword, and he used and a freaking swords. wooden sword the against soldiers her. Soldiers are impressed that there's someone who can match her speed. Kane continues trying to parry her blows and create opportunities, but her defense is too strong. He resorts to using Clock Up and sprints towards her, but just then, he vanishes before her eyes and teleports next to her, pointing his sword at her throat. Kane says the duel is over, but she's just experienced the greatest climax in all of her life. Oh. She hugs Kane and tells him that she's going to be marrying him. Kane tells her that he hasn't even known her Bro. for ten Bro, months. Bro, I'm ten! He thinks <laughs> he has a good point. I'm she ten! She introduces herself as Tijuana, the daughter of a duke, and even though she may be older, she reassures him that elves can reach 300 years of age. <laughs> that doesn't but matter, I'm ten! <laughs> for a long time. Kane runs away from this creep and says that she needs her father's approval first. <laughs> but she Police. tells him it's not a problem. Her family knew she would be lonely forever, so they won't allow her to return home until she's found a spouse. Still, Kane isn't okay with it because he needs to ask an entire army of people for permission. For right, bro. He's and like, I already have two other wives. Up, he's already I don't sleeper. need three. The leader comes to her senses and tells Dime that she's going to meet with the king to make things better. Kane thinks this is the worst possible outcome, and Dime drags Kane to the king. Inside the king's castle, the king wonders why Kane has come back already. <laughs> Tijuana gets up. And even I'm trying to be his wife. Tijuana, like I'm trying to be his wife too. Excuse me. <laughs> and Kane explains that he beat her with his wooden stick so hard and penetrated deep into her defenses. So that's where they're at now. The other girls haven't heard of this, but that penetrated the, the D. <laughs> Darm explains that Tijuana isn't just the leader of the army. She comes from a kingdom filled with elves. <laughs> She's basically their princess. The king breaks the sad news to her, saying that Kane is already sorry to tell you, daughter along but he got two other wives. So she, uh, she thinks that she's Kane like, must oh, so well, I'll just be a third. I don't care what she's saying. Both <laughs> his daughter and the dukes. The king knows how hard it must be, but Tijuana thinks that she wants to marry him even more now. All of them wonder what type of copium she's <laughs> The king looking sure like, bro, I'm about him. sick. But it the king is. Says he will only discuss this after she's gained her father's permission. Tijuana gladly accepts and tells Kane to come along. He wonders where, and she tells him that they're going to be battling with their sticks to deepen their love. No! The king no. wonders how the strongest knight in the entire kingdom was defeated, and he asks Garm if he knows the story behind Kane. However, Garm himself doesn't know anything about him at all, <laughs> but Dime remembers him panicking when he brought up the gods. So the king became suspicious. The count thinks they can test him by showing him that. <coughs> the mythical book. Kane walks around, about to pass out from all the training for right. the last week. I'm sick and tired of this woman. He hears her voice calling out for him and he tries to run away. But Dime grabs him and drags stop him. Grabbing. Like, stop grabbing! Stop grabbing me! He can go again. <laughs> the king asks Kane why he's appearing to be so sad. And Kane says he's tired of seeing his ugly ass. <laughs> <laughs> that one there was a violation, I wouldn't... The king tells him that he's brought him here to show him something. 
The count shows the book, an emperor level magic text that's been passed down. Oh, look, a book! <laughs> Yuya. Kane asks if he can read this book, and the king gives him permission. He opens the book and realizes that he's seen all these spells and is glad to have learned now how to cast them. The king has finally realized it. He explains that the text in the book is one that none of them can read. Kane inspects it once more and realizes what he just read. The king explains that this text was written by the first <laughs> king in Say, a language gotcha. called Japanese. <laughs> Kane thinks you shouldn't be able to read that unless also read you're it. not from here. <laughs> and the king explains that no one's ever been able to read it. He asks Kane once more to explain who he truly is. <laughs> so, and Kane who are you? <laughs> that he can no longer hide his true identity, but thinks he can trust these people. He asks them if they could keep everything they've heard a secret. Otherwise, he will have to leave this kingdom. After the king agrees, Kane goes on to reveal that he has memories from his previous life. He used to live in the same land where the first king came from, a land called Japan. He apologizes mm, uh, for never uh, telling uh, what? Garm asks if he's truly his child. Even if he didn't want <laughs> to be born to yes, such father. a brick, the gods <laughs> confirmed that Garm was his father when he turned five. The entire room is surprised that he met with the gods, and he goes on to tell them of how they were all crazy nutcases, <laughs> but he meets them all the time. Garm asks him to show him his real status, and the entire Be like, room panics. If you say so, everybody, oh, good God. <laughs> Kane has no idea what they're going Dead to do. Dead man's a monster. All, the gods' chosen title is the epitome of the human race, and even kings should bow to him. Kane begs him to wait because that's not what he wants. Even though he has memories of his previous life, this is the life he's always wanted to live, and has everything he's ever wanted. A loving family, overpowered abilities, and people who care about him. There's nothing more Bro, living the dream. a life like this, because in his previous life, none of his family was still alive with him. But now, he's blessed with everything he could have ever dreamed for, and thanks his father for raising him all this time. He apologizes to the king for <laughs> Thank you, Father. Them, but wishes for them to I may not have known you before I was five, but you know, after that, you pretty much, you know, it's been it's been a long ride. As everyone else. However, he wonders if Kane should just be the king instead. Just then, Tijuana enters the room and shows him her father's consent. <laughs> like, Y'all get this woman away from me. Another <laughs> fing girl to the harem, and she takes him away with her. The Duke tells the King not to worry because Cain will always be the same way he always has, and the King thinks they can truly trust him. He commands everyone in the room to keep this matter a secret. His only wish is for Cain to protect this kingdom, his family, the girls he cares about, and anyone who may ever need his help. In the years that followed, Cain began reading the book left by Yuya. The word said that if Cain can read this, then he is from the same home country as him, Japan. This book contains all the information about Yuya's life, including how he was isekai by oh. Kun. Oh, he got hit by a truck! <laughs> he wasn't reborn and was rather just summoned into this new world. Just as Cain kept reading, Silk and Tellies came and thought he was studying for the academy entrance exams. They begin offering to study with him, but Cain tells them that he doesn't have time to deal with their bullshit today. <laughs> they ask him about tomorrow, but he runs <laughs> Not tomorrow either. Time. As he walked through the hallway, nutcase number three came sprinting towards him and asked him to train with her. But he said he will do it some other time. I'm like, he ran, I'm literally, he literally leave me alone. Today is a very special day for him. It's his 12th birthday. It's the day he will finally get to register as an adventurer. Inside the guild, he bumps into a red hair who notices he's young. So he reminds him that he's only got one life and to be mm. careful. You're he a kid. Where he's seen that <laughs> be hair, careful. But approaches the receptionist who asks him if he would like to register. As he filled the paperwork, he decided to conceal his barren status since it didn't have anything to do with adventuring, and handed the paper to the girl. She then asked him to prick his finger for a blood magic test, and offered him his G-rank adventurer's card. Kane remembers his tutors being D-rank, mm -hmm. and wonders how they're doing right now. The woman introduces herself as Rita and says it's nice to meet him. But just then, three guys come up and tell her to ditch the brat and hang out with them because they'll keep her company all night. Kane thinks, oh, sh here we go again, bro. I'd be like, am I really going to have to drop all three of y'all? <laughs> ends up falling instead. The lackeys <laughs> try to retaliate, and both of them rush towards him but clash into each other. Be like, I've dealt with this before. <laughs> draw a sword, but Kane tells him to just wait. At the same moment, the red-haired guy approaches and tells him that if he wants someone to fight, he can fight him all night. They run away after recognizing Claude. And Bro, I'd be like, I'd run too. I'd run. I'd be like, help. I gotta run Claude too on that note. <laughs> would have probably destroyed them alone. So he asks him to have a drink with him. Since Kane is still 12, he gives him some fruit juice and asks him how he was able to pull off those incredible moves. 
Kane says he's been training since he was young with two tutors, and Claude is caught off guard and wonders where he's heard that before. Mm. Claude raises a cheer for him becoming an adventurer today and drink together. Kane wonders why the guys said he's with Ice Flame, so Claude reveals that the name of his party is the Ice Flame. He uses Ooh. a flame sword and his wife uses ice magic. That's and cool. And because they trust each other, they can take big quests and rank up quickly. Kane is surprised to see a gold card since it means he's an A rank. But Claude thinks it's nothing compared to their first king who had a triple S rank. Just then, a wand hmm. hits him in the head and his wife asks him why he's drinking. Claude I'm dead. His wife is Lena and she slams his head to not change the subject. Kane tries to introduce himself and tells her that Claude. She's glowing, bro. She Why is she glowing? Him. If there's any guys who bother him, Lena says she will take care of them. But Claude reveals that Kane would have covered the floor with blood if he hadn't stopped him. Lena hits him in the head and tells him to stop drinking before she covers the floor with his blood and drags him away by the ear. Poor dude was never seen again after that. <laughs> Kane <laughs> wonders what quest he should take as G rank and wonders if he should just start by transporting items with his item box but thinks that would be too boring. Instead, he sees a quest about defeating as many goblins as possible with no upper limit on the reward. So he takes the quest right away. Right, Excited, bro. I just... He runs out bro, of he's a... Uh, he's a... Uh, farming, farming, bro. She asks him what he's been doing, and he reveals that he's going on his first adventure today. So Goblin farming. <laughs> all of her obligations for the day. Kane tries to run away, but Tijuana drags him away again. I'd be like, I'm tired of y'all just day. grabbing me and dragging me places, bro. To spend some alone time with her All because I'm a child. <laughs> and drags him away while wondering where the goblins could be. Kane uses his search ability and discovers the goblins to be ahead. So Tijuana tells him she will rush there. And she asks Kane to chase after her. Whatever she's on is stronger than copium. And I need some of it. As they arrive at the location of the goblins, Tijuana spots a civilian who's about to be destroyed, so they teleport right Yeah, them goblins look Kane nasty, bro. Tijuana rushes towards them and slashes the three goblins standing in her way. A bigger group approaches them, so Kane enchants her physical abilities with his magic to power her up. Tijuana oh, bro, got her lit. Her up with his warm magical fluid. He rushes towards <laughs> the goblins to destroy all of them. Whether it's in sickness or in health, she vows to stay by his side and wants his blade for their first joint task. This bitch is psychotic. Kane wonders how Absolutely. he's always ending up with these nutcases. But the green lizards appear and Kane takes care of it. She runs away with the man. And Kane casts his light ball, along with an ice pillar to destroy every single one of the green lizards. Tijuana thinks she has the best husband ever. Later that day, Millie and Nina wonder why there's a giant crater here. You know who does that? And Nina wonders why she's feeling deja vu inside the guild. Kane reveals that he's defeated the green lizards and wonders if he would be able to get the rewards even though he didn't claim the quest. Rita is confused because defeating a group of them is usually something done by C-rank adventures. But Kane explains that he defeated about 30 of them. Rita uh, is shocked and runs to the chief you did, to tell huh? him the situation. <laughs> He asks her to meet the guy immediately. Cedric introduces himself. <laughs> this 12-year-old. <laughs> he managed to get the green lizards. After all, he's a kid who's a G rank on his first quest, so there's no chance he could even kill a single lizard. Rita tells Cedric that it's wrong to be accusing him of cheating, and Kane agrees, saying he defeated them normally. Cedric says that he was registered as a commoner, so he's likely just trying to swindle reward money, and screams that he will have his guild card removed. Kane thinks this is the worst situation. I'd be like, ever. Cedric, just then, see me one on one and we can talk Kane about this. <laughs> the rat over here is a cheater. The guild master sees Kane. Cedric. And he looks interesting. <laughs> he sits down and asks the chief why he thinks Kane is cheating. He hears out his reasoning and tells Cedric that he's got a lot to learn. He tells someone to come in. And Tijuana enters and yells that she's glad to see her husband. Oh, uh, no, is that Tijuana's father? Engagement a secret and pushes her off to ask her what she's doing. Tijuana says she's here to warn the guild about all the orcs and lizards, and the guild master reveals that he's known he's a baron. The chief is surprised, I'm and the weak. guild master tells him that he was the one to save the princess and Silk from the orcs. He goes on to say that he's the son of Margrave Garn, and if Bro he just putting all his information out there. brothers in law. Kane is surprised that he's Tijuana's brother. Oh, the that's her brother. Cedric, if he's going to continue insulting his brother in law. Cedric instantly bows his head, and Tijuana says that usually a commoner insulting a noble would get executed. But Kane says he would never do that. He accepts his apology and asks him to avoid making accusations right. in the future. Right. Chill out, Cedric. <laughs> will gladly accept his lizards, but he won't be able to stay at a G rank. So as a token of apology, 
He promises to raise his rank to C rank immediately. Tijuana thinks that it's too low since he's already defeated a red dragon and beat her in duels. I mean, like, please Cedric stop. Please stop. This guy. <laughs> Tijuana, Tijuana, please stop. Tijuana's mother agrees that he should raise him all the way to a rank. He commands Rita and Cedric to take care of the paperwork. And Tijuana's brother apologizes on behalf of his subordinate's rudeness. He thanks Be like, for being understanding. You're making me look blatantly way too strong in front of everybody. Him into this marriage. Tijuana tells him that they've already performed love's first joint task. And Kane thinks she's going to be giving everyone a misunderstanding. Right, However, bro. her brother knows better than anyone how lonely and stupid his sister is. Kane is glad he isn't the only one with some sanity. And the gods think that Kane truly never changes. The god of magic wonders why Zenim chose to double all of his protections. And Zenim tells them that he needs to become even stronger. Aaron's seal will be broken soon. And the world will be in trouble when that happens. Huh? It's been 300 years since he was sealed. So Kane needs to be trained even more before Aaron comes to destroy the world's peace. There's only one way to train Kane. And all the gods agree to have Kane train underneath the mysterious man. After oversleeping on the day what, of his exam, bro? Sylvia breaks in and panics because she didn't wake him up early enough, so she offers her maid milkers for breakfast. However, Kane runs away <laughs> and she cries because he <laughs> likes mommy milkers, but he tells her that he'll drink her milk later. She he teleports <laughs> to the exam uh -huh. center, and while walking to class, he wonders why Tellies and Silk weren't taking the exam with him. The teacher begins the two-hour exam, but with Kane's previous knowledge from the other world. He finishes all of it within 30 minutes and sleeps for the rest. Oh, After the written exam me. was over, the teacher took them to the field for their magic assessment. They will be shooting their strongest spell at the target. We're about to and blow the whole wall up. Because there's a defensive barrier around the train. For an anime the teacher. The other kids begin shooting their fireballs. And Kane realizes that he can't use his ultimate inferno ability. So when she calls him up, he casts a simple fireball that turns blue. Even the teacher hasn't seen this level of magic before and tries to stop him. But Kane launches his fireball towards the target, annihilating the entire... That's why I said even that is still way too powerful. It would be safe to use beginner level spells at full power since there's a barrier. But the teacher thinks it's impossible for someone to be this strong when they're this young. She rushes to make sure no one was harmed and tells them to begin the swordsmanship exam for now. At the new field, the professor be like, uh, the adventurers he, will be conducting the He exam. should not. <laughs> he go kill somebody. Claude is one of them. He wonders what Kane is doing here and decides to duel him, saying he's just trying to assess his abilities. Knowing that he's an A-level adventurer, Kane activates his boost ability and rushes towards Claw. They clash okay, Claw. one another and Kane parries every single one of his attacks. While they continue sparring, Kane begs Claude to relax since he would have destroyed any other student. But Claude is enjoying this and activates his boost ability. Claude going crazy! Kane manages to fend off all of his attacks, but worries that he'd break the other kids' bones with his strikes. The teacher yells at them to stop their sparring because all of the kids have just pissed themselves. <laughs> They're Claude like, oh, oh my god! <laughs> and promises to have another sword fight with Kane later. But the teacher comes and tells him that the exam is over and that he should only come back for the results. Kane realizes how bad this is, but Claude pretends like he didn't cause a problem. Claude Sylvia asks him got if ahead of himself. Milk. But Kane tries to ignore her and says he finished the exam and that everything went just Bro said, I'm just gonna she's bypass what she said. And <laughs> wants to give him some milk to celebrate the success. <laughs> no. But Kane thinks he's not hungry. Why the you lie, <laughs> you <always laughs> Sylvia. Lying. She gets angry because he's clearly lying and runs away crying to never be seen again. Oh, good, no one will miss you. <laughs> he called. Inside the castle, the king asks Kane what he's done this time, and Kane says he's tired of always having to see. Be like, bro, it wasn't my fault. Room. He's so angry for constantly dealing with all this bullshit that he wanted to destroy the entire school and make the king pay for all of it. Yeah. And if the king won't stop having these visits, mm. then Cain will use his emperor level magic to destroy his entire castle. The king tells him to shut up already and asks where he took the exam. Tellies and Silk didn't see him, and Cain remembers not seeing them either, saying he entered through the south gate and never saw any of them. The king asks Cain if he knew that the academy has two entrances. Ah, uh, because I was wondering, I was like, was what happened to Tellies and uh, Sylvia? Or not Sylvia, whatever her name was. It is Sylvia, ain't it? Kane realizes he's been destroyed. He tells Kane to stop talking sh and says that his father should have raised him better. He's caused so many problems that when the teacher approached the Duke to tell him about the incident, he knew it was Kane being the usual moron. Right. And started laughing. It's like that sounds like Kane. Destroy him with this information. 
After the Count revealed the repair bill, Cain wished he was nicer to them now, so the King asks him who the ugly ass is again. <laughs> You're like, you are? <laughs> and tells Cain to leave already. The day of the results arrives and Cain looks to see his ranking but can't find it anywhere. Silk runs in and congratulates him on Silk, the that was her class. name. I was like, what her was her name again? tried making fun of him for entering the wrong gate. But hearing how he destroyed the entire area made her want him to destroy her entire area. What do you mean by that? <laughs> and since Telly's isn't here, they don't need to worry about her finding out. But Cain knows this will end poorly. At the entrance gate, Cain sees his sister and she runs because she hasn't had any sis sister in half a season. That's what I was about to say, like, well, she's been, like, completely M.I.A. The class. He's never heard about this, but she just hugs him harder. Meanwhile, Sylvia is wondering if anyone's ever going to want her maid milk. <laughs> Kane finally arrives. She asks him if he wants some milk, but Kane wishes he didn't see her ugly ass again. <laughs> Be like, emotional <laughs> damage! Be like, get out of my face, but she please. And congratulates him on passing to mask her feelings. She knew he would pass all along, so to celebrate, she's going to produce the best milk for him tonight. Kane wonders what the f*** is wrong with this post-menopausal bitch. The butler tries saying she's just happy, but Kane thinks that she'll never get a man like this. During the ceremony, Kane finally waves to the best mommy milkers in the entire kingdom. Rejuvenated, whatever the f*** that word means, he charmingly asks Tellys and Silk to study with him throughout the years. He says that he will call them beautiful in front of their fathers again, and the girls look forward to it. Once the ceremony begins, all the guys are jealous of him. But all the girls want to feel him. Oh. The teacher calls Kane up to the stand. In front of everyone, he got a he, he got a drip down in that uniform. Mixed up the wrong entrances and took the commoner exam. However, he's a genius and knows how to twist this. He goes on to say that just like the first king, who wasn't actually useless like this current king, oh. he believes that everyone should study and make friends equally, regardless of bloodline or nobility status. He prays they can all get along together. Garm is glad that his child can twist every situation the same way mm -hmm. he's about to twist Sarah's plot. The king overheard the slander and came to bully Kane in front of everyone. Uh. He congratulated them on being accepted and is sure they won't be useless like this spineless dweeb next to him. <laughs> the girls and the duke are glad that Kane is finally getting a taste of his own medicine. And the king goes on to apologize that they're going to be dealing with the failure that Garm raised. <laughs> the little sucker is finally getting what he deserved. The first class is finally going to begin. And Kane is late after crying in the bathroom for an hour. The teacher introduces herself and tells everyone to think about their future plan. Kane thinks he's going to be a free adventurer, and the girls are excited to accompany him on his adventure. He asks them what they're planning, and Tellys reveals that she's going to be studying internal affairs so she can manage his future kingdom. Huh. Silk thinks she will also study commerce to help his future domain. This is a straight-up slave harem. After mm -hmm. class is over, Kane walks over to see Parma getting bullied by half Oh, of his no, class. they need to they back off of Parma, bro. Commoner and tell her to drop out of the school right now. The knight in shining armor comes and tells them to treat everyone equally instead of picking on others. They realize it's Baron Kane, and he tells them that Parma is his friend, regardless of her nobility status. Habit thinks he will tell his father to ruin her entire family, but Silk tells them to repeat what they just said. <laughs> Tellys wants to hear them too, and they realize they're screwed. She wonders if she should report their insolence to her father. Do they it! apologize like the cockroaches they are and run away. Kane I'm tired of them, bro. They need to go on somewhere. To pet her cat ears, but the girls realize he's too close to the girl. So Silk commands him to sit on his heels. The poor married simp has already understood how life works, so he behaves <laughs> like a good boy and wonders what they're talking about. However, as he realizes he should just get a divorce, a voice laughs in his head and asks him to come have a chat with him. The mysterious man is waiting inside. Oh, the library. is that the asks Kane to come the evil one that we're talking about? Open the library door getting teleported to a different dimension. The guy asks him if he would like coffee, but Kane wonders how this guy even knows what coffee right, is. Right, who is the this? tells Kane that he's been waiting for That the previous king? And that his name is Sheena. He's gonna get trained by the... The mysterious man tells Kane that there's no need to be guarded, after all. He knows that Zenim reincarnated him here. Kane wonders how he knows the gods, and the man finally introduces He's the previous himself. king. He is Yuya, the first king of this country. Kane remembers or the first king, I should say, not previous. Level text, but wonders if he's a ghost since it's been 300 years. After inspecting him using judgment, he sees Yuya has the special title God of Creation. The world they're currently in is Fabnail, and since Yuya created it, wow. he's the God of Creation of this world. 
Xenum and the rest of the gods wanted Cain to be trained, but he thinks that he's already the strongest person alive. Even with his power, however, Yuya asked Cain to try stealing the cookie, but as he leapt forward, Yuya unsheathed his sword to prevent Cain from moving. Cain wondered why he needed to be this strong, and Yuya told him that there's someone he needs to fight. 300 years ago, this person made all the people in the world fight each other. Using an oracle, he sowed the seeds of distrust among everyone, subconsciously forcing them to fight. That man is the evil god Aaron, and Yuya narrowly managed to oh, steal him away wow. 300 years ago. But recently, that seal has started to loosen, and since Yuya is a god of this world now, he can't interfere in that world, so it's all up to Cain. However, Yuya tells him that his previous life will come into play and teleports him to the middle of the ocean. He promises that he will teach Cain more if he completes the task and disappears. Cain begs him to tell him more right now, but Yuya only gives him a compass that points back to his mansion. His mission will be to level up to 600 if he even wants to stand a chance against Aaron. That is and wild, since Cain bro. Is only level 300. He wonders what will happen to his school if he will be gone for a long time. Yuya tells him not to worry since a year in this world is equal to one day there and disappears. But Cain begs him to wait a minute. Yuya teleports back, telling him he can either do it or don't. Uh. He's realized that he has no other options, so he hm. rushes... Do it or don't, I don't care, but, you know. <laughs> to attack Cain, but he dodges all of its attacks and rushes to slash the giant bear standing in his way. It has been less than five minutes, and what he's already the heck? faced countless S-rank beasts. Back in the other world, Sylvia panickingly opens the door to see Tellies and Silk. She apologizes for panicking because she hasn't seen Kane all day, but they tell her that they haven't seen him at school either. After hearing that, Sylvia worries he's Bro, been skipping school? <laughs> bro, meanwhile, bro's like fighting to the death for a year. He's fine because he always manages to find a way out of everything. If they wait here, she's sure he will eventually appear. A giant bear is about to devour Kane, but he annihilated it with his magic. It's been four months of being stuck in this forest without any sleep, so his mind is starting to break. He hears a puppy whimpering and begins walking towards the source of the noise. Once he arrives, he sees the tiny white puppy who's been injured badly. That look like a rabbit, it ain't it? Of its misery. But as he raises his sword, he sees the look on the puppy's face. Oh, it's, a do it's really a doggy. The sad look on the girl's faces. Kane drops his sword and apologizes for scaring him. After all, he's always just wanted to protect someone. He hugs it close and uses his extra heal. But since it's not enough, he puts every last bit of his mana into healing it and passes out after consuming all his energy. Hours later, the puppy defends him against all of the beasts. Oh, it's a Kane strong dog. It was trying to protect him while he slept. The puppy jumps onto him and starts licking him. He sees that it's been alone all this time just like him, so he asks it if it would like to accompany him on his trip. He got a pet now. Haku. It was the only sort of companionship that allowed him to continue moving forward, because no matter how bad things got, there was now someone he needed to protect, and so the years passed. Eventually, oh, that is tall. To Yuya's mansion, and Yuya was surprised to see how much bigger he's got. Yeah, that he done turned into years, a full adult. The Fenrir next to him, telling Cain that he's a legendary holy beast. If he's managed to gain his trust, but a holy Kane beast might be able to summon him at any time using a contract summon. So Cain gives it a try, and Haku disappears. Yuya tells him he can summon him back at any time, but his training isn't over, and he will be practicing under his teacher, Durain. Kane is excited to have a new master, but he first wants to learn about Aaron and his previous life. Yuya remembers his promise, and tells him that they will begin talking before he leaves. At the training site, Durain says that Kane isn't strong enough. Yuya is stronger than Durain, and since Aaron is stronger than Yuya, Kane stands no chance. Kane hmm. tries boosting to hit Durain, but he instantly evades and delivers a devastating Golly, blow bro. Knocking him unconscious. He wakes up to a ceiling he's never seen before, and Haku comes to lick him. While going downstairs, Kane sees a hot elf girl, and she <laughs> introduces herself as Rory and promises to make him some food. The baby dragon sneezes, and Kane rushes down to meet. There's a Hawk baby jumps dragon. Him out of jealousy. Why am I always getting deja vu? <laughs> He's finished preparing the meal, and Kane takes a bite, realizing he hasn't eaten something this good in years. Durain tells him to eat up. Bro, really was in the woods for like Rory four tells years. Him she can give him some elf milkers if he wants some too. All preparing dough, Silk sighs in sadness, but Tellys tells her that she's sure Kane will be fine, so they should do their best to create something good for him. Sylvia tells them to hurry up and move their And it's only been a couple days for them, bro about to come back a whole experience. adult. The girls realize why this girl's never dated anyone. Durain continues beating Kane down. He's glad that Kane's finally withstanding some hits. After months of this training, 
he's finally managing to get home on his own feet. And oh. the baby dragon is still being a tsundere. After a year of training, Kane was still being beaten down. Another the year. Of having to stop Aaron kept him moving forward. He remembered the day when Yuger revealed everything about his past life. Aaron used to be the god of amusement, the eighth god of Zenum's world. The gods had asked Kane to make them a game because there's no more entertainment in this world. When Aaron used the oracle, he was forcing every person to participate in a death game. And oh, if he wow. ever breaks the seal, he will end up forcing everyone to participate in this game once more. The only way Kane can prevent this is if he gets stronger. So Kane continued fighting to protect those who were important to him. But after all this time, Yuya still had bro one thing looks left to tell cool, him. He bro. was the one who was unable to protect his friends. The reason Aaron is connected to Kane's old life was because of this one reason. The friends Yuya failed to protect were Kane's parents. After they died oh. in an accident, they were reincarnated into Kane's new world and were begged by the gods to bring peace to this new world. But even as Kane's mother casted Inferno, she realized how ineffective her attacks were. Kane's father and Yuya tried wow. slashing against him and landed a scratch, but with a single magical blow, he annihilated their entire troop forces. Kane's mother tried protecting the priestess, but the injuries she sustained couldn't be healed. Kane's father used Overload to rush forward with all of his power and sacrificed himself to restrain Aaron from moving. In that instant, Yuya used the stone to seal away Aaron. His Dang, parents' bro. last words were apologizing to their son. After hearing their words, Cain knew that he wanted one thing. He wanted to protect the people he cared about and make this a peaceful world. So he used his overload and defeated Durain once and for all. Durain congratulated him on tough. finally finishing his training. And Cain ran towards his parents' graves. Yuya reveals that Man. even as they prepared for their final battle against Aaron, they were always looking for a way to get back to him. Cain's glad he finally found out the truth thanking them for always thinking of him, and thanks Yuya for looking after his parents. Yuya opens his fist one final time, and Kane's speed surpasses Yuya's. He thanks That's Yuya for tough. all the training, but Yuya tells him that he was the one who put in all the work. He runs off to his old world, but Yuya tells him to wait. His body's completely different after five years, so he right. casts a so spell about to, to age him back to his original form. Paku appears to accompany him on his journey, and Durain asks him if he would be able to take Jin along with him. He promises that he will take so care of So now he's got the dragon too. Thanks them for taking care of him as he prepares to teleport. I was about to, to say, what are they about to do about Bro's age? A gift for the current king. Durain looks forward to the day he becomes greater than both of them, but Yuya is sure it will be soon. After all, he has something much greater to protect than they do, and there's also lots of people protecting him. Sylvia sees that Kane is finally back and rushes to give him some of her maid milkers. <laughs> he tells her to get her lonely ass off of him because he didn't miss her one bit in those five years. You're a victim! Mm. He only missed Tellies and Silk, and they're glad he's finally back. They show him the cookies they've prepared for him, and Kane cries while he starts eating them. They're glad he <laughs> no enjoyed cookies. Them, and they welcome him home. Watch this next video. Till next time, Yo. my fellow legendary plot masters. That was lit. That was really cool. That's, I need to see the ending of that now. I need to see the ending of that. Or was that the ending? That wasn't the ending, was it? That was awesome. I, I really rocked with that. Let me know what y'all thought about that down in the comments. Be sure again to like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace, y'all.